welcome back. So we'll start with a minute's meditation. Yeah, sit back, relax, sit straight, both feet firmly on the ground, don't fold your arms. body is relaxed.
Well, in the morning, Sister Radhika gave uh, very beautiful examples and very beautiful and very profound insights. One of them that I really liked was, uh, you cannot disconnect from the world, you should learn to connect with it better. Beautiful. Yeah? It's not possible to disconnect from the world. We should learn to connect with it better. And the same goes with the digital technologies. They have been a force of good, a force multiplier in both our personal and professional lives. But anything that is too much of good becomes not so good. Too much of something, even if it is sugar, just because it's good if you keep having it, what happens? Yeah. So similarly, the usage of digital technologies that has increased and become a part of our life so much that now we have to start talking about these two in the same breath. And what we will explore over the course of next 60 to 70 minutes is, and you don't have to answer me. Whatever questions you get here are for you to reflect. Okay? So this is what we will explore. Who is the master? You or your mobile? Okay? How many of you think that you are cowards? Nobody. Very good. So, can I test your bravery? Now that you're all brave? Yeah? Okay. There are three levels of bravery. Okay? Level one, you may not want to write. Good. So we have all level one brave souls already in the hall, some of them at least. So level two bravery. Yeah, there is some such thing as mobile data, which can be switched off and switched on. Yeah? So now you can choose. Are you level one brave, level two brave, or level three brave? So I leave it to you. So I'm, and I'm also not going to ask to raise your hands and make you feel uncomfortable. So you choose how brave you are. <laughs> we can play with the words. I'm only trying to talk about only level three, only three levels. You switch off your notifications, you switch off your mobile data, or you switch off your mobile. You choose, okay? And there is that discomfort for some of us that has already begun. Mobile and switch off? <laughs> yeah, we will explore those. So I don't want to force you, but each one of you said you were brave, so I thought, let's test the bravery. So it's for yourself. Good. So what do I have in store for uh, the next few minutes? We are going to talk about the impact of high calorie digital consumption. You know what happens when you have a lot of high calorie diet, which is not properly used by the body? You grow obese, you grow overweight. So we will explore some of the signs of that overweight, of what happens because of the high calorie digital consumption. On your brain, thinking, productivity and growth, Relationships and family on your health and well-being. Yes, these are impacted. And we will also explore some powerful low-calorie but healthy digital detox techniques. Okay, so first we will become aware. So before you detect, you need to become aware. 
Somebody was asking how do these three fit together. So all these sessions are an opportunity for you to become aware what to detect, how to detach and how to detox yourself. But the power or the decision is in your hands. Our role is to make all of us aware. So this session talks about the ills caused by the overuse of digital technologies in all these areas of life, okay? From here, the idea is hopefully at the end of the session you would have made some choices and decisions which would take from here to here. I checked, there is no mobile on the table. Only after that I pasted it. Okay, good. So, what is the impact of the usage of mobile and these digital technologies on brain and thinking? What happens? Few of the behavioral consequences of the techno brain that we seem to have developed with a lot of short bursts of attention, repeatedly checking the stuff for the dopamine shot, and when we do that again and again and again, these are some of the behavioral changes that start happening without our knowledge. The reason why it becomes so important for us to learn about this in today's age is each one of these problems, each one of them is very insidious. That is, it very slowly but steadily builds up. If you are not aware, by the time you are aware, most of the energy or most of the ill health problems are already caused. So it's very important that we learn about them and stop them. This is all about prevention, not about cure. So some of the behavioral consequences that we are seeing, whether it is in professionals, whether it is in teenagers, whether it is in students, hyperactivity, inattention. The attention span is coming down drastically. We will explore that. Depression. People, those who use a lot of social media and who have loads and loads of friends on Facebook and they spend most of their time with the online friends without having face-to-face -face communication are the ones it has been proven who are more prone to depression. We will also explore the science behind the human moments. Why as people, we must see another face at least a few times a day. And what is its impact on brain and mind? We will explore that. And this multitasking mania. So we want to do multiple things at the same time and we think we can do it. No. It's very interesting as uh, uh, professionals, learned ones that too in IT industry, we carry ego on our shoulders. We don't agree that if you multitask, your capability goes down. If you continue to use your mobile like this, you will not be much good because it will impact your productivity. But I'm going to present a lot of research which should convince you and hopefully make you a little more humble. Yeah? And there's a very clear relationship between the new technology exposure and the epidemic of mental disorders that we are seeing in the world today. It's huge. It's very big. We may not realize it, but it is there. And some of those, each one of us might already be experiencing. We'll explore that. But today, there is a very clear causal link between the new technology exposure and mental disorders. Can you see that from the back? Okay, go ahead, read it. Now, that's become a part of our life now. And what I say is we have become a distracted generation. 
continuously getting distracted every few minutes. And we made this, I got it from somewhere and then added Facebook, but this is from 2007 when there was not much of WhatsApp, so maybe I should update it and call it as WhatsApp curve rather than Facebook curve. So in 1980, time between two interruptions was about two hours. Somebody had to physically come to you and then say something because we were not so well connected. Then we had pagers, then we had cell phones, then we had email, then we had web. As a result, the time between two interruptions started decreasing. And the interesting part is now it is asymptotically approaching zero. That is, we are well past the brain's threshold. What it means is coming from IT background, let me give an example. When you are running one program, if you have to run another program, that program that is running on the CPU must be context switched with the next program for it to run. Brain is also the same thing. You are engaged in one activity. You want to switch to another activity. You have to pay what is called a switching penalty. Brain, that's the characteristic of the brain. You can't help. All of us have to pay that. Okay? But if you don't give enough time for this switching, okay, those of you who have done operating system scores, you know that that is what we call as thrashing where the CPU spends a lot of time switching the programs rather than running the programs. That's the threshold that we have already passed. Where we continuously keep switching between the tasks without giving the time to brain for it to focus on one particular task. And that is where almost all of us, or I would, I would remove almost, I would say all of us are afflicted with this disease of continuous partial attention. There's a name for it now. Now we call that as continuous partial attention. And what happens with this is, you are not giving any time for your brain to focus on one particular activity and actually start enjoying it or actually start experiencing it. That's why quite often you must have heard yourself saying it or your friend saying it. Yaar, aajkal kuch maza nahi aata hai zindagi mein. Wohi wohi baat, wohi wohi cheez hai. Because you keep going inside the cycle without even taking time to enjoy the ride from your office to home, home to office, or even having a nice face-to-face -face conversation. When you don't do that, our ability to experience the world, our ability to experience what we are a part of drastically drops down. That's when we keep switching between the tasks. And that's very bad for our mental health. And distracted and constantly stimulated brain is a weak and stressed brain. The more you stimulate it, check yourself. The amount of time we spend in stimulating ourselves. When was the last time, not here, before coming here, you took 15 minutes of time just for yourself, speaking with yourself? We don't seem to have that kind of time at all. And when you are constantly stimulated and distracted, your brain practically it becomes weak. And on an average, this is from the research by Professor Gloria Mark at University of California, Irwin. What she did was she sent a bunch of her graduate students in an IT company in Silicon Valley, and they were just observing how these professionals were working. And after a few days of observation, this is what she saw. On an average, people switched to tasks and self-interrupted themselves every three minutes and five seconds. That's scary. Three minutes and five seconds. Please don't click any pictures. I will share the slide deck with you. I'm gonna flash my email ID at the end. Just sit back and try to reflect. Don't be in a hurry to click any of the pictures. I'll send the whole slide deck, including loads of other material if any one of you is interested. So time between two interruptions is three minutes and 
five seconds. It can even be suddenly you will think you, you are typing a document and what she observed was if that interruption is unrelated to the task you are doing and if you spend some time, a few minutes in that unrelated task for you to come back and then focus, it takes on an average 23 minutes. We may not realize it. You are typing a document, suddenly you go to another window. Suddenly you go to check your WhatsApp message or you go to your Facebook feed or the Twitter or that message that's come from your colleague or you yourself just switch to the another tab. So that self interruption is happening every three minutes and five seconds. Now imagine if you were to spend only three minutes and five seconds, what would be the amount of focus? It's scary when we see doctors carrying their mobiles into the operating theaters. And this self interruption, if you just sit back, now this is where I keep using that phrase as I said, when you are in the flow, you won't observe it. But when you just sit back and reflect, then you will see the minute you are about to self interrupt yourself, you can catch now. You become aware, you detect. And then you have an option to detach or continue. And this is causing a lot of impact on our attention span. Over the years, the attention span has reduced so much. According to one study, on an average, the attention span of a goldfish is 12 minutes, goldfish. And the attention span of human beings has come down to eight minutes. But why should we discuss about attention in today's world? Because wherever my attention goes, energy flows and wherever energy flows, life grows, whether positive or negative. I'm paying attention means that's where I'm directing my energy to. If that is positive, that is what will grow. If it is negative, that is what will grow. Because the interesting thing about brain is brain is a wonderful tatastu machine. It's value neutral. You keep thinking negative, it will keep saying tatasu, tatasu, tatasu. You keep thinking positive, it keeps saying tatasu, tatasu, tatasu. Who has the switch? I have the switch. What we decide to pay attention to and what we decide to ignore literally shapes our existence and our reality. Each minute, you might blame your boss, you might blame traffic, you might blame your mother-in-law, father-in-law, daughter-in-law, son, father, anybody. But we are choosing our reality and experience by deciding what to focus on. In one sentence, if we have to summarize what Sister Radhika spoke, it is this. What is it that you are deciding to pay attention to? That's what creates our reality. That's what creates our experience. And quality of work is equal to time spent multiplied by intensity of focus. Very important. If this is eight hours and this is 25%, what's the effective quality of work? It's fourth. So this is what we don't seem to be focusing on. This is what we should be discussing about, not this. And interestingly, I see organizations, you have your time punching cards and then all sorts of biometrics and automatic algorithms that will at the end of the week say you worked four hours less, you warmed your chair for eight hours less, so next week I'm going to cut one day. We seem to focus a lot on this aspect without understanding this simple equation. When was the last time you had a conversation about the attention or the focus and how to improve that for your team members and to yourself? But this is what governs. And paying attention is equivalent to giving a slice of your life. Let's not forget that. Whatever you're paying attention to, effectively you're giving a piece of your life to that. So you decide who should get those slices of your life. 
or what should get those slices of your life. That's about the internet usage. A user spends about 200 minutes on mobile internet because accessibility and affordability increase distraction. Accessibility and affordability increase distraction. Just a decade ago when mobiles came in, we would switch on the mobile data, check our emails and then switch off the mobile data. Or we would search for a mobile free hotspot. Now those days are gone, I can create my own hotspot. Because it's become so accessible and affordable that it has multiplied my distraction. In India it's about 200 minutes and in US it's about 300 minutes and 40% of this is used on social media and 38% of it is on Facebook, WhatsApp and Instagram. 30% on entertainment and 30% on other categories. Now this is where we are spending our life, we are slicing our life and then giving it to these aspects. Now this is a simple question that you need to reflect on yourself. You need to reflect. If this is the amount of time and this is what we are doing, is it productive? Is it useful? Is it necessary? Now this is the what I would call it as geo load of distraction which we now carry in our pocket itself. Okay? It's no longer mother load of distraction, it's a geo load of distraction. And how many millions of songs? 10,000 hours of movies and if you watch 10 hours a day, that's about 30 years. 400 plus TV channels, hundreds of magazines, hundreds of newspapers, all of them are touch away. So distraction has become a lot more affordable also now. It's very quick and then this is what gets advertised. Every week we are adding so many more newspapers, so many more movies, so many more channels and we only charge you this or this is free and we proudly celebrate that now India has become number one in the mobile usage after the introduction of Geo. But for what we are using nobody asks that question because this is what is happening. And when we start using these digital technologies, when we start consuming things from the screen, when we start surfing and not reading, when we browse things and we don't spend time in reflecting, it is having physical impact on our brain. There's a researcher called Gary Small he did this very interesting research. He scanned the brains of people when they were browsing the content and the same content when they were reading from a book. And this is what, um, this is what he saw. When you are reading a book, you see there are only some parts of the brain that are activated. The left side one is when you read a book. The right side one is when you are surfing the net and you are browsing and trying to read the same content. Let me explain. So this part of the brain you see here, is it available here? No, it's not activated. This part is what we call as the prefrontal cortex where we make the decisions where we analyze things because this, is what, this part of the brain is what makes us human. When you surf and read the same content, continuously you have to make a decision. Should I click this? Should I skip this? Should I click this? Should I skip this? And that takes away, even if it is a small portion, a good amount of our energy, our decision making capability. When you are reading, either you close the book or you continue to read. There's nothing else to decide. So you are absorbing the information. But when you switch to a screen, when you start browsing the same content continuously, every few seconds, you have to make a decision and then invest your energy in making that decision and that's not cheap. And with and what is the result of 
the V moving to this one compared, I mean, couple that with the decreasing attention span, we have forgotten the art of reading books. How many of you read a book, not a magazine, a book cover to cover? When was the last time? When was the last time? In the last one month, how many of you have read a book cover to cover? So in a team of about 420 people, that's less than 10 hands. It's not the question of time. We can make time. We don't have time, you know, as Anil Kapoor quips in that movie, time milta nahi madam, time banana padta hai. Yeah? And that's what is happening because now we are not able to focus. I was speaking to one of my uh, colleagues in a previous company. He said, Bala, it's been seven years since I read a book. Now I don't think I can even read it because I just lost that capability to sit with the book, read a few pages uninterrupted and then forget about completing it. Even one chapter I can't do. And this is what we are doing to our brains. We will explore that. If you keep doing a task again and again, you are physically transforming the brain to do that same task much more easily. If you are continuously getting distracted, you are physically transforming the brain to get distracted even more easily. That is the brain's capability of neuroplasticity, ability of the brain to transform itself in response to what you're doing. And what is the result of these? And why should we be concerned? The result is when you surf, there is only information decoding. There is no information integration. Because anything that you read, if it has to be useful, it needs to be integrated with what is already there, what you already read, so that new insights can be generated. But when you surf, you are only just gathering the information. You are not allowing your brain to integrate it. And the impatience that we got used to is changing the structure of the brain. Brain makes it, the neuroplasticity makes it for you to become impatient even more easily. I said brain is a tathastu machine. You become continuously become impatient, then brain gets a signal. That's what you want to become. Then it says tathastu. Become more impatient. Until recently I was able to read five pages. Now it has become four pages. Now it is, I can only do one page. Because it's making it easier for you. Because that's what you want to become, that's what the brain makes it easier. And that's the property of the brain. It's a characteristic, what we call as neuroplasticity. There's a big difference between deep learning versus shallow browsing. The kind of complex problems that we are facing today, whether at the workplace, at our, in our personal life, or in the society, they all need deep learning and deep thinking. You cannot wish away those problems by just doing some shallow browsing. Google does not have all the answers. Google does not have all the answers. That's why meditation is needed. Because some of those questions, some of those answers can only be explored with him, not through Google. And this art of deep learning, unfortunately, we are forgetting. And the kids are forgetting. It's even more scary. And this use of digital technologies has increased. How did this impatience, where did it come from? Instant gratification. I want it now. There was a time when we ordered something and we patiently waited in anticipation of to enjoy what we ordered. Now we order something and we impatiently wait with anxiety when it will arrive. Anticipation is replaced with anxiety. See the difference? And this instant gratification is one of the key reasons for many of the mental health issues. Because we don't give time to ourselves. We are no longer patient, we can't wait. And this is reflecting even in our relationships. In low single digits is what we used to have. The divorce rates in India 
until recently. But now it's more than double digits. And then we also celebrate, I recently got unmarried. All this is because we do not give time for the relationship to mature. Why? Where is that coming from? Because that impatience is getting into, is seeping into every single aspect of our life. And creative solutions for unique problems you're facing today are not possible without deep and reflective thinking and learning. These are all complex problems. Now, Baiju's, I cringe each time I see Shah Rukh Khan come on television and advertise this app. What is it a kid can read from a stupid mobile phone which, is, which has such a small screen and then become an expert? And then it takes, I don't want to comment, somebody who's talking about learning. And then what he does for a living is something completely different. And then, that's what we advertise and that is what now parents and kids are going gaga about. And you saw that. When you browse versus when you start using books, I'm not saying we should not use any digital technologies, but when you extend that beyond a point, instead of making it more as a reference, you make that as something that you do more regularly, this is what is happening. And internet addiction, this is a recognized addiction now. This is a mental illness. And we do have internet de-addiction centers, even in India. One got opened recently in 2014 in Chanakyapuri in Delhi. There is an internet de-addiction center. And we already have internet de-addiction centers in US, in Beijing, and in South Korea. And those two are two internet addicts that you saw from an internet de-addiction center in US. And the picture that you saw of the people playing video games was from South Korea. Okay, and that was, as if that is not enough, now we have the, another aspect of the digital technology which is in the form of social media. And what is the impact of social media? It's a false sense of connection leading to many of these issues. Isolation, loneliness, broken relationships, infidelity, and torn families. You must have read in the newspaper just last month, there's a guy who applied for divorce in the court saying, my wife spent 16 hours on Facebook, she's ignoring my kids. For last two years I've been trying to correct it. Two years ago I shifted my kids to the hostel. Still she hasn't improved, so now grant me divorce. This is what is actually happening. And there's a lot of discontentment and depression on the rise with the usage of Facebook. Because on the Facebook, have you ever seen somebody who is sad, post on their wall, who is unhappy, who is anxious? No, we see all the wonderful stuff, all the wonderful pictures, all the best part of the people, and then we compare. I had a friend of mine who tells me that, Bala, I have to go to this place with my wife. Why? Because we have to take pictures and post on the Facebook. Otherwise, my wife, she feels bad. Because if her friends are posting and she is not posting, what will happen to her stature in the society? So when we go to vacation, we only go for clicking those pictures so that she can post them on Facebook. And this is reality. And that is causing a lot of discontentment and depression on the rise. And this increased distraction is leading to decreased productivity and worst case loss of job. You saw that when you keep chopping your attention, when you are not able to focus, that increases our anxiety, that increases our discontentment and that drastically reduces our productivity. It's like we shooting ourselves repeatedly on our foot, but gradually. And the decreasing attention span is leading to poor school performance. And this is a reality now. Increased risk of obesity and sleep disorders because you spend so much of time. There are teenagers who wear adult diapers in South, in South Korea so that they don't have to get up for their nature calls. It's reality, it's happening today as we speak. 
possibility of addiction disorder and exposing children to online predators. So there might be some uses, but when you compare the harm that the social media is doing compared with the use, they don't compare at all. So it's a choice you need to make. And what is the impact on our body when we continuously use the mobile phone? What happens to different organs of our body? Let me walk you through that. First, on your eyes. What are the causes? Small fonts, blue light, and then staring at it. How many of you take eye drops for your dry eyes? How many of you suffer headaches? That's because we forgot this art of blinking. A simple act of blinking lubricates the eyelid. And when you don't do that, that's what leads to dry eyes and from there, headache. The causes and the symptoms, eyes burn and itch, dry eyes, headache, and in the worst case, it's even blurred vision. And what is the remedy? Every 20 minutes, for 20 seconds, look at something which is 20 feet away. Simple? It's simple, but it's not easy. We often tend to misunderstand the two. Whatever we are discussing here are all simple things. There's nothing complicated. But they're not easy. And, the, and this is a very simple, these are two very simple remedies. We can do that. Every 20 minutes, look at something for 20 seconds that is at least 20 feet away. And then blink often. And this is what we forget. Now we have, like tennis elbow, we have a cell phone elbow. OK? New technologies bring in new diseases. This is what I, all of these, I call them as e-diseases. OK? Stretching and holding for long periods, symptoms, numbness and tingling sensation. Any time you feel that numbness and tingling sensation, it is because of impinging on the nerve that is carrying those impulses. When that is impinged, the result is numbness and tingling sensation. And what is the remedy? Limit at a stretch usage, give breaks. Again, very simple, but not so easy. And stretching and holding for long periods, pain, degeneration of this tendon. And what is the remedy? Keep changing the position of the phone. And this part, this part of the hand is what gets damaged. There is also what we call as text claw. OK? It's called as text claw. Too much texting, typing, browsing. And what are the symptoms? Pain in the thumb, hand, wrist, and of course, carpal tunnel syndrome because that impacts this nerve that's carrying the impulses, the sensations from the fingers to the brain. That becomes numb. And then tendonitis. Remedy, touch your keypad lightly. Don't grip phone too hard. And then have good posture when you're holding it. Long usage, what does it result in? Rounded shoulders, upper and lower back pain, and then your head forward. Very wrong posture. So now we have a name. We call that as text neck. OK? When you are straight, your head puts a load of about 12 LB on your neck. When this same weight, when you bend at 60 degrees, this weight on your neck increases five times more. It's as if you are putting 30 kg weight on your neck. And that's what leads to what we call as text neck. Now check yourself, how many times a day for how many minutes we do this? And what is it leading to? Texting, typing, browsing, tension headaches, neck and shoulder pain, difficulty in breathing, pain in chest, and low back pain. What is the remedy? When you are trying to text, hold the phone at eye level. Not like this, but here. It's uncomfortable, and that's a good thing. <laughs> OK? 
and regular neck strengthening exercises. We will do some of those even tomorrow. You know, I've asked Sister Sujatha to also include neck strengthening exercises. We will practice those. And let me just give you very simple ones. You want to do that? Now, sit straight. And again, these are very simple. You can do them even at your desk at least twice a day. Sit straight and slowly turn your neck towards your right and stretch and look behind you as much as possible and hold it there. If it is too painful, you can come back. But if it is bearable pain, it's good pain because you're stretching it for the first time. Just stretch it. And then after 15 seconds, you slowly bring it back. Straight. Take a deep breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. And again, gently move to your left. Gently bring it back. Take a deep breath. Was that easy? Just takes few seconds. And this you can repeat at least five times. This is one exercise. The second exercise, OK? You bend down and have your chin touch here, OK, on your chest. Do you feel the pain here? Yeah, when you try to do this, you can feel that pain in your upper body. Yeah, here. So touch. Hold it there. And gently bring it back. Take a deep breath. Breathe out, and while you breathe in, raise your head as far back as possible. Gently bring it back. Take a deep breath. Now that was the second exercise. Easy? Yeah, so you do this five times. And the third one, stretch. And you can see this part of your neck aching, which is fine. That's good pain. Gently bring it back. Breathe in. And do it on the other side. Gently bring it back. Good. So these are three simple exercises, five times each, which you can do at least twice a day. And that will keep your neck healthy. OK? And the exposure of blue light that comes out of the mobiles, what, how does that impact your brain and body? So I won't go into the details. We have this post poster that we have stuck in the lobby. You can see that when you go for lunch or in the evening, in the afternoon when you come back after your rest, OK? And what are some simple tips for healthier phone use? The screen brightness should be turned down to the lowest practical setting. 
and they should not be used at least an hour before bedtime. We will see some of those. Limit the number of calls you make, the length of your calls and use hands free so that you can stay away from the radiation. And when you dial the phone, when the number is being dialed, that's when the radiation is highest. So don't listen to it until the other party picks it up. When the phone is being dialed, just watch it until the connection happens. Because during dialing phase is when the most amount of radiation is emitted. Okay? And I'll share some more. Okay, and most of the time when it is okay, try to use it in a hands-free mode. And to reduce the blue light, which has very bad impact on our sleep rhythms, which we will explore a lot more tomorrow in our conversation on sleep, you can install this f.lux app on your, for Mac OS and Twilight app from Google App Store on your mobile and you can switch the settings. What these two apps do is they make the screen colors into yellowish red and orange from the blue wavelengths because it's the blue wavelength that disturbs our sleep cycles by tricking the brain saying that it is not yet night. And that impacts the melatonin secretion. That's the hormone which the body uses, brain secretes and the body uses to signal to itself that night has arrived, we should sleep, okay? So all the different parts of the body that get impacted which we saw a few minutes ago with the improper holding and usage of mobile phones. Now using mobile phones for more than 30 minutes a day is risky. Good. So we'll do a quick exercise before we do another short meditation. Is that okay? Okay. So listen to the instructions carefully. Say as I say and do as I do. Say as I say and do as I do, front, up, front, down, front, up, front, down. Now the next instruction, say as I say, but don't do what I do. You should do something else. If I say front, you can do this or you can do this, but you should not do this. But say front, say as I say, but don't do what I do, okay? Up, down, front, good? Up, down, front, up, down. Now say as I say and do as I do, down. Thank you, sit down. Good. So for next five or six minutes, we'll do something very interesting. This is what we call as surfing the urge. Okay? So we learn how to surf the urge of reaching out to our mobile and then checking it. So just for five minutes, I'm going to ask you to commit an act of blasphemy for some of you digital blasphemy. Switch off your mobiles, all of you. S please switch them off just for five minutes. And I promise you, heavens are not going to fall apart. Nothing is going to happen. You will absolutely be fine because you're in Mount Abu. Switch off your mobile and, and hold your mobile with both your hands. Switch it off, hold it. Not here, here, you can keep it on your lap, feel comfortable, sit back, close your eyes. Keep, keep holding. Switch it off. 
no airplane mode. Yes. Pia? Super. See, there are some who still don't have a mobile. Very good. Good for you, Pia. Yes. So sit back, close your eyes, and hold your mobile in your arms. Take a deep breath. Keep holding your mobile. Take a deep breath and feel the mobile in your hands. Feel the screen. Feel the back or the rear of the mobile. Feel the sides. Feel it. This is the six inch gadget that has come to dominate our lives. Feel it. Try to visualize what it is made up of. Wipe the screen with your finger, with your thumb, and then see what it might be made up of. It's a piece of glass and a piece of metal and some sand we call a silica, just that, nothing else. Just feel it. How many times did this six inch inanimate thing draw your attention to itself? How many times a loved one was waiting, but this little six inch inanimate thing is what you spent your time with. How many times there was a loved one, there's a colleague, there's somebody who wanted to speak with you, but you were busy with the six inch inanimate stuff. Feel it. Ask yourself, are you more powerful or is this six inch gadget more powerful? Ask yourself how much anxious you become when your mobile is about to discharge and you cannot find a charger or a charging point nearby. Check how many times you check this little thing. How many times you check it every few minutes? Ask yourself. Is this good for my health? Is this good for my relationships? Is this helping my productivity? Is this helping my family? Everything that you saw for the last 60 minutes is coming from this little six inch inanimate object that you are holding in your hands now. Ask yourself this simple question, just what or who is this mobile phone? Are you the master or is this six inch inanimate object that you're holding in your hands, is that your master? Decide today. Next time you get the urge to check your mobile when you're in the middle of a meeting or when you're in the middle of a conversation, just ask yourself, who is pulling your attention? Or are you so weak that you cannot withstand the pull of this six inch inanimate object? Thank you. Gently open your eyes. You can switch it on if you want to. So what do we need to do? Is it possible? So how was the experience? Heart was acing? 
because you switched it off, yeah, or you felt relaxed, as if you reclaimed your sovereignty. Yeah, you are no longer a slave, you are sovereign king. You control this. It doesn't control me, at least for a few minutes. Very good. Take, take, take that with you. Okay? Let's not allow gadgets dictate how we should live. Let us decide how we should use these gadgets. Let's become the master and not the slave. And can we change this downward trend? Yes. And once again, our brain comes to our rescue. There's this wonderful characteristic of brain called neuroplasticity. New connections can grow within one weeks of practice. Any new practice that you want to adopt in your life as a result of you attending this retreat, your brain will start helping you do that practice more effectively by growing new, new connections, by growing new neurons. Within just one week of practice, brain will start sprouting neurons for you to help create that practice and record it in your brain. Within eight weeks of practice, physically your brain is going to change to help you continue with that positive practice. It hardly takes eight weeks of time. New positive habits can be created with practice. And you can practice detox techniques regularly for greatest benefits and we will review some of those. And what's the key word in all those four points? That's the key thing. Because that's what brain seems to love. You keep practicing it, brain will make it easier and easier for you, for you to do that positive thing next time. But when will this happen? When I want to? When I want to do it. Okay, and I should start doing it. Okay? And some of the detox techniques, very simple but powerful detox mantra is what I would like to share with each one of you. The first one starts with a D. Be diligent and disciplined about the usage of your gadgets. Become aware. Becoming diligent is becoming aware. And once you become aware, once you have detected that something is pulling your attention unnecessarily, you try to detach. And this process of detachment is not comfortable, I'm telling you. Initially, it is not comfortable, it is painful. You know, when I was talking to my uh, previous boss during one of the conversations, I said, I switch off my mobile at 10 p.m. He was shocked. He said, you switch off your mobile? I said, yeah, I switch off my mobile. I've been doing it for the last 10 years since I've been using mobile. He said, you switch it off? Third time he was asking. I said, yes, I switch it off. Do you switch off the modem also? Yes. The whole room is radiation free. And we'll explore that tomorrow when we discuss about sleep. Okay, so be diligent and disciplined about the usage. Very important. If there is one thing that we encourage you to carry forward with yourself is this habit to sit back and reflect, introspect periodically. It's a very, very powerful tool, both for your physical and mental health. It is lack of that space between two tasks that we are doing that's creating so much of anxiety. We are not giving any space for our mind or brain to relax. And brain needs that downtime for very good neural health. So introspect periodically. Be grateful and not greedy. You want to do another exercise? Let's do that. Sit back, close your eyes. Sit back, close your eyes. What are the five things in your life that you are grateful for? Think about those. What are those five things in your life as of today that you are grateful for?
feel them. All those people, all those opportunities that you got. Be grateful, be thankful. Thank you. Open your eyes. There's something called gratitude journal, which you can start from tonight. Three things that you are grateful for, for that whole day, whatever has happened. Are there three things for which you are grateful for? Can you write them down and maintain a gratitude journal? And the diary that was given to you can become your gratitude journal. And research shows that those people who regularly write their gratitude journal are more healthy, more happy, less discontented, less anxious, and less depressed. Because this is a process of counting our blessings. And it has physical and mental impact. I get involved in things outside of yourself. Think beyond. Make time for yourself, your family, and friends. Can you guess what's our next letter? Good. Awe is a very positive emotion. And you get that, especially when you're a part of nature. And the research shows, even if you get into the nature and experience that feeling of awe once a month, it helps you remain stress-free for the next four weeks. And ex try to experience that awe at least once a month and ask each time you move your hand to lift your mobile, is it necessary? Very simple, is it necessary? L, take leisure breaks to laugh and to live. Okay, it's very simple. Digital to help us detox from digital. A human moment is an authentic psychological encounter that happens when two people are in the same physical space, physical presence and their emotional intellectual attention. Research shows that as human beings, we need contact with other human beings. We need to see those happy faces for us to feel good about ourselves, for us to be mentally healthy. And Good worry, this is what motivates you by helping you become aware of real threats to your survival, like a competitor on the horizon, and that is good worry. And there's a second type of worry, what we call as toxic worry. That is anxiety that is not based on reality, leading to indecision and destructive action, which is the result of negative and, non and judgmental self-talk. The more negative self-talk you do, the more toxic worry you increase. And what does research show? Lack of human moments increases toxic worry. And deficit of human moments damages person's emotional health. Even if you have one positive human moment at workplace all through the day, that is also good. Check yourself, how many days pass by without these authentic human moments at work? We work for hours together, sometimes 10 hours, 12 hours, and there is no authentic human moment. And when that goes on and on, you see how that has a very negative impact on our emotional health. A very simple seven day detox plan, if you folks are interested, because anything that you talk about detox nowadays, we have these detox plans. Day one, stop using your phone as alarm clock. This is one of the worst habits we people have developed, by a simple alarm clock, okay? It doesn't cost much. Last week I bought one, it costed only 210 rupees. And it has snooze facility. Okay, so this cannot become the excuse for keeping your mobile on all through the night. Day two, leave your phone outside your bedroom and make the bedroom e-free. You should not have any radiation inside your room. 
I'll give you an example. So there's this guy who uh, came into the uh, meditation center and then he was complaining of uh, not being able to sleep at all. And the first question the meditation teacher asked is, what do you have in your bedroom? And you will be surprised with the answer he gave. All sorts of electronic gadgets, most of them in the on condition is what he sleeps with. Whether he, Bose speaker, his mobile, his iPad, his Mac, all sorts of stuff. And teacher said, she said only one thing, can you move all of them into a separate room and only you and your bed are there in your bedroom. Can you try that? Can you believe it? The very first day he did it, he was able to sleep peacefully, which he could not for months together. And since then, it's been about five or six months now, his sleep doesn't get disturbed. The only thing he did was he moved all the electronic gadgets outside of his bedroom. Somebody was asking something. No. The reason why we ask you to keep it outside is it removes that urge to switch it on or what you were saying to bring it back into the current mode from flight mode. Okay, so just keep it in a separate room. Make your room, bedroom is for sleeping. Because the problem is brain has this typical characteristic of neuroassociative conditioning. Without our knowledge, if we use certain spaces for a certain activity, brain associates those with that. If you sit on the bed and don't sleep, then your brain associates bed with not sleeping. And that becomes really worse. And that's where your sleeplessness becomes worst. But if you want to associate the bed with the sleep, then do all those things that will help you to fall asleep in your bed. And one of those is making your bedroom e-free. Day three. Switch off all your notifications. Four, do not carry your phone to a breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Is this possible? Very simple. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, no mobile phones around the table. Day five, spend time with your family. I know it's asking for too much, but it's a part of a plan, try it. And it's your own family. Day six, do not use mobile phone at least for an hour. He was telling about two hours, I reduced it by 50%. <laughs> at least an hour before you sleep, read a book instead. I know it's very difficult. I know for most of us, the last thing that we do is, 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 spend time with that six inch inanimate thing. And the first thing that we do in the morning is once again look at that six inch inanimate thing. Amazing. But try this. It will improve the quality of your sleep. And how does this radiation and blue light impact our sleep? We will explore in a lot more detail tomorrow. Day seven, remove social media apps from your phone and celebrate a screen free day with your loved ones at least once a week. One day, one full day is screen free. You understand that? That's a new phrase that you're learning from here. Not just e-free, screen-free. No screens whatsoever. Mobiles, iPads, iPhones, your touch devices, television, all these are screens. It's interesting what kind of people we have become. We spend more time staring at the screen than looking at people. So spend a screen-free day, okay? And I would love to hear your feedback. Okay, when you spent a screen free day to drop me an email because I want to collect those experiences and share with a wider audience so that they get inspired. Okay, can we start a screen free movement today from here at Gans Rover? Will you take, make a promise to yourself one day screen free day? Is it possible? Yes. Thank you. Essence is very simple. Spend more quality time with yourself, for yourself. Why? Why? Because you deserve your own love and attention. 
spend more quality time with your fam with your family spend more quality time with your friends for your friends okay remember this <laughs> mobile mera hai main mobile ka nahi okay good so that's my email if any one of you is interested you can drop me an email and i would love to hear the positive experiences the positive changes that you have made as a result of whatever you are getting you are becoming aware of here as a part of this retreat email is good <laughs> okay good um, i know i took sorry i took six more minutes than the uh, usual 1 pm any questions ah uh, yes ansh He, he won't do it from today <laughs> he won't do it <laughs> yeah, you, you you tell us give give the mic grip after after you finish that thing of switching off the mobile phone ever i saw my father taking the mobile phone right out of that and doing something on that <laughs> <laughs> no he will change from today okay uh, hardik you have to answer they are not leaving <laughs> give dilip dilip give the mic they are pinning you down hardik <laughs> so i don't use facebook um, i have sent zero whatsapp messages no 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 they are they asked a different question <laughs> they asked a different question answer them <laughs> yeah yeah I, that's I what i'm correcting him <laughs> i have turned it off right now good you are asking something yes it's better that you make your bedroom e free that helps try it yes ma'am adilip yeah uh, thanks brother it was a wonderful session and lot of insights and the best thing that i liked about it is you were giving solutions also like alarm kindle uh, i am still looking for one solution i actually do this guided meditation do you have an alternative where i don't need where i can do it with e free way with with e free way yeah yeah absolutely you listen to the guided meditation a few times and then you repeat it for yourself it requires practice but you can do it okay. so we we give that guided meditation as an aid for people who don't know what to think because they usually ask us this question when i sit in meditation what should i do right. so then we help them to think so we provide the thoughts through this method of guided meditation instead if you don't want to use any of those gadgets we have wonderful books you can listen make notes make notes so that becomes e free it's right. a notebook right. Right. and before you start the meditation read those thoughts right right sit back and try to recall and don't be in a hurry yes don't be in a hurry because when you are impatient it won't work thank you thank you so much yes yeah we being in it industry we keep on reading and give certifications uh, i have noticed like when i read physical books and when i read e books for any kind of my certifications i get tired while reading e books yes physically uh, when i make notes 
it's very easy to understand. Uh, I have been doing since my childhood. Uh, if I read once, if I write, I remember. There is no need to read twice. Correct. So I did not understand why I get tired uh, while reading e-books or any kind of online stuff. You, you, you saw that? Yeah, I saw. In terms of your eyes and in terms of the way you hold the thing and in terms of the screen light, there are so many things that are actually impacting, you know, our whole body. And the result of all these activities, there is no one single thing. There are multiple things, that's what we explored, that makes you more tired. And the most important part is when you read a book, when you scribble, when you make notes, when you sit and reflect, because there's nothing else for you. You, don't, you can't click, you can't scroll, you can't keep thinking about how much you covered because the scroll continuously keeps going. You don't even have a feel for how much you covered, how much you had to cover. All these subtle things, they exhaust us. And as, if I can call you, if you don't mind, as an old timer who's used to reading books, please continue that. Okay? Uh, yes. Just to add what she has said, uh, in our company they are closing off the library and opening uh, e-book uh, libraries. Where is that? <laughs> I am here. It's oh. called digitization they are saying and they are closing off the library and opening it. Which we didn't like it and we asked no more. Please keep the books as is so that whenever you want you just walk in, leave your computers aside, walk into your library, read something and come back to work. That was a refreshment for us. But yeah. in terms of digitization, they are just closing off the physical touch of the books, which was very much needed. That's what I was just wanted to say. So what I share, what I want to share is by this book called Internet and Brain by Gary Small, physical book, and give it to the decision maker who wants to digitize all your books. <laughs> because that summarizes the research of why we still have to go back to books if our intention is learning. If our intention is browsing and surfing and cut and paste, but our prayers and best wishes are with you. <laughs> and all your employees. Yes. I didn't. <laughs> the, the, the video that I chose mentioned. It, where possible. If you have to choose between a Kindle and an iPad, choose Kindle. If you have to choose between a book and a Kindle, use a book. If you have to choose between a mobile and a Kindle, use Kindle. So it's relative. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes. well, thank you, Mr. Baradeh, for a very inspirational speech. And I have just a couple of uh, things which I have observed in my life, in my organization as well as in the other organizations I visit to. Most of the employees are so used to the mobile usage. And uh, it's, it has become the integral part of their life. Now the question is that we know that India is using about 200 minutes a day on the mobile phone at work, not counting even the disruptions they are getting and missing the link to their work. How do we, uh, say, encourage them to focus more and use less mobile, even by keeping, not switch off the mobile, even by keeping the mobile on, and respect the privacy and the courtesy to the other fellow colleagues? And second question I have is for the very young kids. I've seen many schools have starting the learning processes on the tablets and the iPads and so on. Saddest part, yes. They are commenting that now because of the digital world, it helps children learning the visualization, which of course I don't personally agree, but they have a different methodology. So what is your say on that, please? Thank you. Yeah, the second one is easier to answer. It is us parents who have to start having conversation with the schools and start telling them because we are their customers. Whatever customers want is what in a way if you can insist, if a good group of, of you are there and you can present the research that is happening 
and put it in front of the school authorities, hopefully they will start changing. But this has to change because this change that we are trying to bring in does not make any sense. For certain areas, for certain things it is useful because we should not throw baby with the bath water. Certain things it is useful, so we use that. But if that is what becomes the regular adoption, that is where the danger comes. So as parents, it is us who need to take that initiative and then encourage the school authorities not to do that en masse. And to answer your first question, did anyone from your company come here? Only you, okay, then it is easier. <laughs> so what you can do is if you want to make them experience a couple of hours without receiving calls, install a jammer silently. Use it only for two hours in their workplace. Do that for a few days and then have a conversation with them. Because in one of our retreat centers, we just wanted to try this out. So we invited a lot of these very busy uh, VIPs for attending a couple of hour session, okay? And uh, so in the retreat, they, they came in and they heard the discourse, they experienced the meditation and when they came for lunch, they said, this place is magical. For the first time in months, I was never disturbed with a phone call. <laughs> and you know what we did. And did they lose something? They didn't lose anything. They were actually happy. Because we have, we have a false sense of ego as if somebody is going to require us in this next one hour as if we are so important. We are not. None of us is so important that we can't switch off our mobile for an hour. So if you can do that, first let them experience it, then have a conversation. Because without experiencing, it will fall to deaf ears. Brother, uh, uh, one second, how many more minutes can you spare? It's 117, so can I take another five or 10 minutes? Five minutes is okay? Okay, then two more questions. Yeah, uh, sir, Pratham. so for the IT professionals who are Android developers or iOS developers who basically always require phones uh, Do <laughs> for they? their work. Yeah. Do they? Yeah, you have to test every time you make any change. Yeah, I want, to, I want you to reflect on that. <laughs> okay, next. Yes. Uh, brother Bala. See, um, it's, a, it's, a part of, it's a part of work. So we will discuss some of those. I was talking about the usage and if you can use some of the simulators instead of the mobile phone, we have a lot of simulators where most of the functionality can be tested on a PC as against just on the Android phone. A few of the final functional testing can be done on Android phone, but a lot of it can be done using simulators. You don't have to, right from day one, from the first build, you don't have to test it on a mobile phone because it will keep crashing anyway. Uh, Brother Bala, um, thank you very much for this. I mean, uh, yeah. right. Uh, thank you very much for this wonderful information. I mean, uh, there wasn't a single point where I wasn't just nodding my head in agreement. So thank you so much. Um, there was just this one point that stood out for me, and trust me, I've been trying to implement this for a long time now. Now, when you talk about uh, just living one day of the week mobile free, switching off your mobile, switching off all your notifications, trust me, I've been wanting to do this, but the world doesn't let me. Now, I'll, now let me elaborate when I say the world doesn't let me. Uh, I mean, if I switch off my mobile, now in this world where we are connected more with technology as compared to in person, now if I switch off my mobile, uh, my friends, my colleagues, my relative, my family, now, uh, if I am not around uh, them, uh, they obviously would be calling me up, they'll be sending messages, and when they're unable to reach, uh, you know, they get tensed, uh, they start worrying about my whereabouts and all. So, and I think I, I really don't want that situation at the same time, I also win, uh, want to live my life mobile free. Now, also choose a day, now let's say if I choose Sunday, that's supposed to be my day. I mean, you know, six days of the week is given to my organization and that's a very sad truth. But then even on Sunday, you know, just one thing and the next day you hear it's like, you know, you can't answer your phone, you can't answer your notifications. I believe I've, I mean, you know, I made yep, my point clear. I got it. 
two questions. Do you have a landline? Oh, uh, yes, I do, but I really use it. <laughs> no, I just asked a question. I'll, yes. I'll, I'll give you the answer. Yes, do you have I a landline and, yes. it, and it works? It does, yes. Well, Good. the last time I checked, I believe. <laughs> I mean, it's been a while since I've received a call on it, but. Now, second question. Second question. For your family and your dear friends who become so anxious when you switch off your mobile, do you inform them in advance of this tapasya or this prat that you do before you do it? Um, okay. Do you advertise that on your Facebook, on your Twitter feed, on your WhatsApp? <laughs> Tomorrow, this mobile will be off, but I am at home, peaceful, happy. Guys, I want to do one mobile free day. Do you do but that? But see, that's the thing. I mean, even if... Uh, it's, Brother, I, I appreciate, but no, what I'm trying, where I'm coming from yes. is, I'm sorry if I'm pulling your leg. No, please. Uh, where there is a will, there is a way. Our intention is to make people aware of where we are, so we tell them. I'll tell you in my own life, those people whose calls I do not want to receive after 10 p.m., I'm not concerned about those, so I switch off my mobile. Those people whose calls are important for me so that I pick them up even after 10 p.m., I give my landline. Problem solved. That's it. There all, there's always a way. Let's not give excuses. It's okay, they will become anxious for a couple of hours. They always have a landline, they will call. Or they will check your Facebook feed. They'll check your Twitter feed. You announce it. There's nothing wrong with it. Couple of friends will miss. They will come back, they'll become a little bit anxious. It's okay. That kind of pain is fine. Because it's helping you and it's helping them also. Right? And then you can inform them. Once a month or once a week, this day, during this time, I don't use my mobile. Fine. And in less than a month, almost whoever calls you on your mobile or sends you on your WhatsApp, if you do this just for four weeks, trust me, and I would love to get your feedback, everybody, everybody will feel good. And you will feel good. Or maybe you will feel bad because nobody bothered or became anxious because they were not contacting you. <laughs> OK, that's possible. Just do this for four weeks. Last question. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fine. But he's asking on a long-term basis, so that's why we Yeah, absolutely. Last question. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Brother Bala, thank you so much for a wonderful speech. Uh, one thing I, I would uh, uh, like to bring in light is that we are in a such a society nowadays that because of the phone, we are in a situation that uh, when somebody is calling us, we are bound to pick up that call. Means like... Is that so? No, no, no. What I'm trying to say is that means uh, if we are not picking up the phone, when we, next time when we, you know, we attend them, they are blast they blast on us like why you are not picking up the phone so if you like, don't pick up what happens sorry can you repeat no, no what i'm trying to say they blast on us means why you are not picking up the phone where are you yeah can't you answer that question yeah yeah we we i you we have the automatic messaging thing right yeah i mean have a standard one and if you want to be really forthright i don't want to pick up your phone now Yeah, and one more. If you, you want to try that? Try it. Yeah, one more. You can say, one, I don't want to pick up your phone now. They will never call you again. Yeah, one yeah, more thing so I, go I, ahead, go I, I would agree on that is that uh, the, on the, um, le, uh, that uh, for the task, when you explain that whenever we are, we, are, we are working on one thing, if I'm writing one mail, it often happens that because of some notification, we lose attention and we start doing the another. Again, uh, the, again the third notification comes and again we lose the another track and we... So at, at Sears... The end, of, end of the day, we, we do not end up even completing one task even either. Good question. Let me suggest something that we are trying out at Sears. Okay, and you will listen to their experiences tonight. Can you pick up 30 minutes in the first half of your day and 30 minutes in the second half of your day where you switch off all your notifications, inform your team members, inform your boss too that this 30 minutes is uninterrupted time and focus on your work alone. All notifications you switch off. Don't check any email. 
I was about to say kill your Outlook. <laughs> okay, so you, you switch off your browser, switch off your Outlook, just focus on that document or that email or that algorithm that you have to develop. Half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the evening, in the second half, and try to keep extending that. The key is not the, the sender, the key is for you to stop your urge to click it after seeing it. And that's where we did that meditation for. We should learn to surf that urge. The minute it appears, what is there? As one of my friends said, checking WhatsApp quite often is like checking a baby's diaper. Nothing is there, but we check it anyway. <laughs> yeah. So we, we need to enforce that discipline in ourselves so that even if it comes, I can ignore and move on. Last question. Can. Yes. Thank you, Rara, for your valuable presentation. My question is that you have told about the quality of work. You have yeah. given an equation for this. Yeah. So how an organization can implement this? Yeah, good. Um, very simple. Uh, make note of this. The name of the book is called Deep Work by Cal Newport. You can make a note, Deep Work by Cal Newport, and you can search, uh, he has a video, a TED talk, on why he doesn't use social media, C-A-L-N-E-W-P-O-R-T. So please buy a hard copy of that book, read it, reflect, you will get all the suggestions of how to introduce this deep work at the personal level and at the organizational level, okay? Very good. So we will end the session. I'll meet you after the session, okay? Sorry? Yeah, name, the name of the book is Deep Work, W-O-R-K, and the name of the author is Cal Newport, C-A-L space N-E-W-P-O-R-T, because he's a professor at MIT, computer science professor at MIT, he's written that book. Okay, sit back. We'll end that with just one minute's relaxation, and then we go for lunch. Sit straight. Take a deep breath. Gently recall three things that you remember from today's conversation. Try to decide on one change that you would make in your life from now on with respect to your mobile usage. Just one change. Make a determined thought. It will be uncomfortable initially, but remember, you are the master. Visualize yourself making that change. Experience it. Feel that sense of triumph of having made that change. Gently wipe your palms, rub your palms, and wipe your eyes.